Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best-selling author, and the only three-time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the podcast. This is your host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the good fortune to be interviewing Leslie Marenko of TrustCouncil.com. She is a partner at Trust Council who focuses her practice in the area of asset protection, estate planning, and corporate transactions. Leslie, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Seth. All right. A couple of quick disclaimers before we get started. Leslie is an attorney in the state of Florida. If you are not in the state of Florida, please seek appropriate counsel where you are. She is not giving any legal advice on today's podcast. And special thank you to Robert Lehman, the financial advisor who connected us. Uh, Leslie, let's go back in time a little bit. What inspired you to go to law school in the first place? Oh, funny. Okay. So uh, fun fact, I used to be a civil engineer and it was actually one of my senior design professors um, that told me one day, and engineering is a five-year degree, so it was kind of out of nowhere that he uh, pulled me aside and said, you know, you should really look into going to law school. And at the time I was a little insulted. Uh, I was like, what is this man trying to say? Am I like, you know, am I co- I'm a conflictive person? I'm not arguing with anybody. What is he, what is he trying to tell me? Um, but it was actually, he was the first person that put that in my mind that maybe I should look into law school. Fast forward quite a few years, probably like three, four years. Um, I'm already working as an engineer and I find myself in Miami and I am not from here. And uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time. What can I tell you? You know, the, something you do when you're young, you're um, looking at uh, master's programs. I see law school. The classes are deceivingly interesting or appear to be interesting. And such is life. Uh, that, that's it. Three years goes by like that. And surprise, you've graduated from law school. And here we are. It's been 12 years. <laughs> Well, congratulations on that. How did you arrive at the area of specialization in terms of asset protection, estate planning, and business planning that you're doing now? Yeah. And so, I mean, I definitely never knew I wanted to be a lawyer, but uh, before I went to law school, but I think I fell into the uh, perfect area of law. And honestly, I, I don't think I would ever do any other area of law. Um, it was, that's usually just a product of um, the first place you start working at. They probably do a few different practice areas. And uh, the first place I worked at was a mid-sized firm. And this was one of those practice areas. My, one of my first partners, when I opened my law firm now, which is Trust Council, um, once told me there are only two types of estate planning lawyers. The ones that really like the people aspect, the family, the dynamics, getting to know them. And the ones that really like the structuring aspect. And believe it or not, I am definitely the latter. Um, I think I gravitate towards the linearity of structuring. And that is what happens essentially when you do estate planning, you are restructuring assets, whether that's for the purposes of true succession or because we're doing some tax planning or we're doing some asset protection planning. It's like a big puzzle. And you got to figure out where these pieces go. And a lot of times you need to transfer those pieces to where they go. Um, and I think my brain automatically works that way. And so it's a fantastic area of law for someone like me. That is awesome. That makes total sense. So who is an ideal client for you? Okay. So an ideal client for me, and I know this is a little different. Like I said, I have uh, several partners in this law firm and they are all significantly older than me. So if you ask them, what is their um, target market, I guess, uh, it would probably be a very different answer. 
For me, it's truly um, someone, usually a business owner that is married, somewhere between the ages of 40 and 55. They usually have children that are still minors. Um, and they either do or don't work in a family business that's not necessarily uh, totally ideal, uh, it just leads to different conversations. But most people down here in South Florida um, have some type of business that they've started, some type of entrepreneurial thing on the side or, or whatnot. And so that's pretty much my typical client. Awesome. And then for our business owners watching and listening, which is the majority of our audience, what are some of the biggest issues that they're running into that you are helping them solve? So I would say one of the main things when you do planning for business owners specifically that might be a little different than if you went to a general estate planning lawyer or even you know a shop that does a lot of different things so they're not even truly focused on estate planning is the funding. And when I say funding, and I know that confuses a lot of people, but the coordination of your assets, your business usually being one of the biggest assets you have, and your actual estate plan is crucial. Um, certain things will override other things so that if you're doing planning in a very piecemeal fashion, if your estate planning lawyer doesn't know what the corporate documents say, or hasn't spoken to your CPA, or hasn't talked to your corporate attorney, if you have one in house, um, it's really going to be a problem later. All of those things need to be coordinated. They need to be taken into account. Whether you have uh, partners that are uh, third party partners, whether you have family members that are partners, all of those things are really, really, really important, and they need to be specifically planned for inside of the umbrella, which is estate planning. That makes a lot of sense. What are some of the biggest mistakes you've seen business owners make? Um, you know, this is Miami and down here, uh, we just have a, a whole lot of people faking, knowing how to do things. And sometimes just because, uh, you run into somebody and they go, Oh, look, I did it like this. And all deeds are probably one of those things. And it's a huge mistake. I actually call it, um, Cuban estate planning. And I can say that because I'm Cuban. And so I see people putting their kids' names on properties. I see people putting other people's names on properties, just trying to avoid one problem and causing a much bigger one later down the road. They're getting bad advice from people that are either general practitioners or not even attorneys at all. Um, so that's probably the biggest mistake I see that people will literally call my office and my intake will ask me a question. Hey, how much for to change one deed from one thing to another? There's a million follow-up questions to that. And the only person, the, the only thing they want to know when they call is like, how much for the deed? That's not the way it works. Uh, there's, a, there's a world behind that of tax consequences that you're not realizing are going to happen. So the biggest mistake is not getting good advice, not seeking good advice. And then how are those clients finding you? Most of our clients come from other financial professionals um, on the estate planning side. Uh, so it's financial advisors or life insurance agents. Uh, we do quite a bit of premium finance, um, structuring for foreign nationals, uh, the CPA. It's usually another professional that refers us, the client. And a lot of times we're working with that professional in tandem with their planning. Awesome. You've achieved so much success for your clients in your firm. What's your biggest challenge now? Well, uh, when we're recording this podcast, it is Q2 of 2022. And I'm sure everyone is going to say the same thing if you ask them this question, which is staffing, right? Finding um, qualified people that really know what they're doing and bringing them on and making them part of a team um, is it's its own challenge in and of itself. It always is when you're a business owner, right? Uh, it just so happens that in the last, I would say, uh, six to nine months, this has become a very interesting market for probably the entire legal profession in South Florida. And so I'll give you an example. We're looking for a 10-year-plus estate tax planning attorney for the last seven months, uh, pretty much. And it's really hard to find. Um, there's a gap in our market in estate planning where between the time that the exemption changed 10 years ago and now fewer and fewer attorneys were trained, fewer of those jobs were available and therefore they're not trained at this point um, to do that type of planning. 
So we find ourselves in an interesting spot as a smaller firm uh, because most people either worked at big law uh, in a very, very large law firm, or there's just a gap in the market. There's nobody outside of big law really doing this kind of sophisticated planning for the very, very million dollar and above client. Your passion is obvious. What do you like best about what you're doing? Say, ask that again. I'm sorry. I said, what do you like best about what you're doing? Oh, I mean, there's so many moving parts. I mean, I, I truly think that I am also a business owner. Having my own firm and starting this firm seven years ago has uh, taught me a lot about things I never knew I would want to know about. But um, I do. I, I have a passion, A, to do a really uh, great job and save clients lots of money. I think I get a lot of fulfillment um, when I restructure something and a couple of years later, they have some type of risk that has developed, whether somebody is threatening to sue them or somebody has sued them. And I already know that we structure things in a certain way that it's going to be really difficult for that creditor to get to those assets or whether we're saving somebody 40% on the estate tax side, because we go through an entire restructure. Um, it's just a great area of law. The clients are fantastic. Um, and so I, I know I'm very biased, but I don't think I could ever do any other area. Understood. For our folks watching or listening who want to learn more about you, where is the best place for them to go? Well, I'm everywhere, I feel. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, we have our website, which is just trustcouncil.com. Um, all of our bios are there. Um, my email is my last name, Marenko at trustcouncil.com. We put out a newsletter every uh, couple of weeks that is usually <laughs> like very celebrity based uh, state planning type topics, right? That newsletter has grown incredibly in the last seven years. And we have over 30,000 people that subscribe to that newsletter. And I always tell everyone, you reply to that newsletter, it truly comes to me. And so I get a lot of feedback uh, from those newsletters. It's a fun read. We try to keep it, uh, you know, very, very conversational and not so technical, but that's usually how people will reach out to me. They'll respond to the newsletter and whether you have a question or you want to schedule a family work planning session or anything, that's kind of usually the first step. Feel free to reach out. All right. Well, this has been Seth Green with Leslie Marenko from trustcouncil.com. Leslie, thanks so much for joining us. No problem. Thank you, Seth. Thanks everybody for watching or listening. Thanks again to Robert Lehman for the introduction and we will talk to you or see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727 888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.